All right, welcome to part two in this series on my process for building a website from scratch. In part one, we talked about how I use AI to generate ideas. So if you haven't seen that video, I would highly recommend checking that out before you watch this, otherwise, this may not make sense. But if you have seen that, then in this video, we're gonna talk about how I generate copy, how I mock up designs in Figma, and how I create a rough style guide to use for development. So let's dive in. We're back in Reloom. So this is where we left off last time. And we used Reloom to generate a wireframe using AI and we modified all these components. So I mentioned last time that Reloom isn't very good at generating uh, um, text copy. And so what we wanna do is just generate copy that would be more useful, all right? Now, I'm not a copywriter, and so some of the things that I mentioned may make copywriters cringe, but for me, my main philosophy is I just try to keep it simple. And one of the tenets that I have for that is using uh, as few words as needed to get the message across. And for every project, your brevity is probably not going to be a good thing, but I think for a lot of projects it is because people have shorter and shorter attention spans. And so I think that if you can get a message across using five sentences, and if you can convey that same message using one sentence, it makes way more sense to just use the one sentence as long as nothing is really lost. And so that's kind of like the mentality that I used when doing this. And so instead of having like a, a clever little tagline, I just literally say, hey, I'm Jansley. I'm a YouTuber, web designer, community builder. And then this would be like, uh, I already knew in my mind, this is gonna be like a text scroll through effect. And so like for me, there's different tones that you can have when it comes to copy. And for me, I just wanted this to be a casual conversational tone. I didn't really want this to be super professional. It's just not what I wanted. But for a project where you do need professionalism, then you would inject that personality. But for me, like I could have easily just put this as uh, my services, my skills. But no, I said, here's what I work on. It's just, it's, it's more conversational. And it's just like, it's little things like that that I feel like uh, add just that personal touch. And it's that thing that AI won't replace or it won't anytime soon. It's just these personal ways of, of writing out copy, making headlines, and that sort of thing. Is this groundbreaking? No, but it is just a little bit different than like what AI would come up with. All right, so then I just talk, do, do I do very brief blurbs on like what I do for each of these things. So talking about documenting my journey uh, on YouTube, I talk about just my, what I do as a web designer. I build websites and make people go, whoa, I want what you're offering. Is that cheeky? Is it cheesy? Yeah, it's cheesy. But like, how many times have I seen portfolios where people are like, I build websites that are beautiful and accessible and great for all users. Like, it's just boring. So yeah, this is cheesy, but it's at least a little bit different and it injects a little bit of personality into an otherwise, what could have been a very boring blurb. Um, so that's my take on it. Uh, there's probably a little bit more science behind copywriting, but this, these are just sort of like my philosophies. And I sort of just have taken that through this entire homepage. I could have just said my recent videos, but I said, no, binge my recent videos. Just like, I don't know, little, little just uh, small nuances to inject some personality. And that's what I did there. And so from there, once I have copy that I'm happy with, I pretty much try to finalize the copy that's in the wireframes because I don't wanna have to worry about copy when I'm in the design phase. Like what I think I mentioned this in the last video, I try to keep the similar tasks and I try to do them all at once because it utilizes different parts of your brain. Like copywriting uses different parts of your brain than visual design. I mean, probably similar parts, but there's gonna be differences as well. So to me, it makes more sense to be efficient with my brain use and do all of my copy at one time so that I can focus all my energy on design for the next part. 
Okay, so once I have this where I want it, then I can actually go to Figma and I can import this. Now here's where things didn't go in a way that I probably should have done things. All right, so I should have just started designing from here, but the problem was is that everything is in auto layout in Figma. So I can't just like drag things around. So that was annoying, but it makes sense. So instead I kind of like started from scratch and I started like rebuilding things and figuring out how I wanted them to look on here. So this isn't really a final design, uh, but just kind of gave me an idea on figuring out what colors I want and, and primary call to actions and that sort of a thing. Uh, in the future, what I would do is I would just use the plugin called Destroyer and I would destroy instances and in auto layouts. And basically what it's going to do is remove auto layout for everything. So now I can move everything around and figure out how I want things. So in the future, that's what I would do. And then just sort of play with the different types of colors and designs that I want from here, including typography. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I made things hard for myself and I just tried to do things from scratch. Now, as far as typography, uh, I was playing around with the idea of using a serif font and then a sans serif font and having them play off of each other. But, you know, personally, I just didn't like the way it looked for the brand that I was going for. So I actually did not end up using the serif font, the Playfair display. I just ended up going with, um, I think I used either Poppins or Lotto for the final thing. But in any case, Figma is where you just experiment. That's, that's sort of what I'm getting at here, is that Figma is the playground where I can just sort of see, okay, do, do, I, want my, uh, do I want my buttons rounded? Do, do I want them or do I want them squared off? And I can sort of see what the difference is and be like, eh, I don't like that. Let's go back to rounded. And just kind of going from there and seeing what looks good. Uh, you can see I, ha I knew I wanted some sort of like header um, image or video. Obviously this isn't me. I just pulled a random image from some guy um, just to get a sense of what things look like. And so that's really what I'm doing here is just figuring out kind of like a general, like my design direction for going to uh, Webflow. And then once I have a direction here, again, if I, in an ideal world, I probably would have flushed this out way more than what I did here, but it ended up working out for the context of this project for me. Once I have this where I'm reasonably happy with it, then it's off to figuring out colors and a style guide. So what I did for this project is I actually borrowed really heavily from the Google material design because in full transparency, I've never really designed a lot in a dark mode, but I knew that I wanted a dark mode website. And so I figured I should, I, I figured I would reference some sort of established structure to designing in dark mode. And so Google has an amazing reference sheet on how to design in dark mode. So they go over how to make a branded dark background to use with your uh, to, with your website, they talk about how to layer in, uh, or rather they talk about how to desaturate colors so that it works well with the dark background. They talk about how to set up different um, white overlays so that you can create different layers within your design. And so I just borrowed heavily from this and I knew that I wanted my brand to be teal and I knew that because this is a personal website, my uh, color decision was really based off of just what do I like? That's it. Now, obviously, if it was for a freelance project, there, there's a little more that has to go into it. But if you're just building a portfolio, I don't think a lot of um, research really needs to go into it. It's just like, what do you like? What speaks to you? At least that's what I did here. I know I love teal. It's like my favorite color. So I created a branded background um, off, of, off of that, which is what you see here. And then just like with the material, what the material design suggested, I created different elevations and, and hierarchies of a background so that it gets a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, so that if I have cards 
it looks like it's elevated off of the background. And then for like an error and a success color, I desaturated them using a white overlay to create a more desaturated look. I also added white, um, I added some transparency to text so that you can have hierarchy within text. And this again, this is from the material design standard. So 87% uh, opacity to create um, for, for text that has less importance. And it kind of just goes down the list here to you have like disabled text. And so that's pretty much what I do in Figma. And it's not like this isn't super pretty to look at, but it is functional and it gets the idea across. And so from here, once I have this figured out and I figure out what typography I wanna use, which I think I used, well, this isn't correct. I, I think for the final thing I used, um, I think I used Lotto for the, for the text. But in any case, once I have the typography and the colors that I'm gonna be using, then I'm ready to dive into Webflow. So really phase two of this thing is really just figuring out the copy within the wireframes, focus on all the copy first, then you can copy this uh, wireframe and put it into Figma and you can break all of the auto layouts so that you can kind of move these around if you want to and, and change the structure as well as play with the colors and, and typography that you want to use. And finally from there, fleshing out the style guide in terms of typography, colors, and um, yeah, that sort of a thing. So uh, there's probably more um, complete ways of doing this and maybe more elegant ways of doing this, but this is my scrappy way of doing things. And then in the third and final video of this series, we'll cover how I implement all of this in Webflow, how to uh, create a style guide within Webflow, importing the design from um, Reloom into Webflow, and then just further designing from there. And so I will see you in the next video. Take care.